guys welcome back how we doing morning morning to all the familiar faces happy wednesday man go sort of sort of quick week wednesday already Uh, foolish, yeah, it's a tough time to be trading in, uh, yesterday's back and forth. Gotta somehow figure out a way to take your hands off the mouse when the market looks the way it did. Especially around Powell speaking, that's crazy, right? Morning, everyone. Welcome back. Bonjour, buongiorno, buenos dias. Coffee has been drank. Already got that out of the way. Now we got the water. Make sure to drink your water. Yeah, QQQ off the 433 was very nice yesterday. Still an interesting level here today. Um, we're still stuck below it. So there's still uh looks like there's still some opportunity to potentially fade this 433 again, but it's a little bit too tight of a range, and the continuation, I don't know if I want to get involved in that type of action again. You know, yesterday, you really needed to be precise and very um, very disciplined on taking profits, right? So if you took the 433 rejection on the queues yesterday, you didn't really have that much to take prop. Like, you didn't have that much continuation. You had to be understanding of, hey, I'm not going to get the big move here. Let me scalp this. So... That's sometimes pretty hard, right? It's It sounds easy in theory where you're like, oh, I'll just scalp it to the downside. But I can tell you that uh, from experience and even just myself, right, once you're in that put at that 433, 
and you start seeing it break down, you want more. Your your brain always always resorts to wanting more downside. Your emotions want to hold it. You want to look for more. And then you get slapped in the face and it pops right back against you at the exact level you knew it would bounce at uh, within the channel, right? So if you're going to trade in this channel, you better be disciplined to take profits on, you know, one $2 downside inside of a three-point gap, three-point channel. Um, but every time, you know, the thing that hurts a lot of people is they'll take that, they'll take that put, they'll see the downside come in, they're up 25%, it's down at the demand lows, they don't take their profits because they're looking for the breakdown, demand lows hold, like they did the entire day, stock bounces against you, you end up taking a loss, right? So, if you're going to trade this action, guys, it's got to be precise. It's got it's, it's it's not, you know, beginner type action. This is why I tell people for the most part just not to trade it. Um so what you saw yesterday is some is some more advanced, you know, really emotional control strategic trading. So that's that. Uh let's go ahead and uh jump into our normal schedule. Uh so well, obviously, you look at the economic calendar, the earnings calendar, of course, the futures, and uh, yeah. So let's get started. Press that like button if you guys could subscribe to the channel. Help me get to eighty thousand subscribers, man. I'm gonna do something for you guys at eighty thousand. I got some new merch coming. Arvin's working on some new shirts, some hats coming out. Uh, I don't know. We'll do something cool. So if you guys could press that like button, subscribe if you're new. Here every day at eight o'clock. Tell your friends. Tell your parents. Tell your sister. Tell them all. All right. Um, economic calendar. Here we go. So today is Wednesday. And really not much. Really not much. Um, IMF meetings all day like it has been. Uh, crude oil inventories, 1030. Beige book, 2 o'clock. And that's pretty much it, guys. These are some after hours speaking. Really nothing there, right? 5.30, 6.30, don't have to worry about that. Uh, pretty light week on the economic. How do you di how do you contact me? Shoot me an email, man, and I'm a one-man team. So if you shoot me an email today, you're probably not going to get an answer for a few days, just to let you know. Um, so IMF meetings, uh, crude oil inventories, beige book, that's really it for today. Nothing that's really that major. So I don't think you need to really uh, worry about much today on the economic side. Tomorrow, unemployment claims. That's our normal unemployment claims. A lot of Fed presidents, Fed FOMC members speaking tomorrow. Um, so be careful of that. And that's pretty much the end of our week. Um, so not too much. Not too much, you know, action here. Uh, nothing really today that I'm worried about. Unemployment claims tomorrow. And that's really it. So really the only thing left is uh is earnings right this week i think earnings is probably more important to be paying attention to here so let me go ahead and pull up that earnings calendar again it looks like the earnings calendar is a little bit more in focus than let's say the economic calendar for this end of week the last few days of this week and that is because you have uh today you had asml which i think is a little bit lower in the pre-market after hours today, Las Vegas Sands, not really interested. CSX, not really interested. Um, TSMC, TSM, right, tomorrow morning. That's going to be important for the semiconductors, so be careful there. BlackRock, DR Horton, Builder. That's about it there. Netflix, obviously the big, uh, first big tech earnings of the, of, the, of the earnings season. So Netflix, that's a big one. And then American Express on Friday, P&G on Friday. That's about it. So a few big names coming out. Nothing major, major. Next week's going to be where it gets real juicy. Uh, but these are probably the two biggest of the week. TSM, Netflix, that is on Thursday. All right? All right. So let's, uh, let's start it up. Let's go to the NASDAQ futures. Let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. And here we go. So... Yesterday, it pretty much did. The market did exactly what we talked about. It popped into that 18,000. QQQ popped into that 433. And we basically just saw the market reject at that level all day. We didn't quite get the follow through we were looking for, uh, but we definitely stayed below our key levels. Is this a bear flag forming? That's something that's definitely on my mind, right? Is this just a little pop, little fake bounce, and then another drop? This looks sort of like that, right? I would not be surprised to see this one bit, okay? That would not surprise me at all, right? If we get a drop 
a little bit of consolidation back into a supply and then another fall would not surprise me in the slightest so something i am keeping my eyes out for there um but today right we have not even been able and even yesterday we have not been able to get over eighteen thousand. so i would not be out here looking for upside if we are under eighteen thousand. there's just really no technical reason for it if we get above 18 right and we do reclaim that level then you can flip your thesis if you like that upside move but i think at the very least at the very minimum for the market to go up, you need to be over 18,000. So I would want to wait for it, right? Before trying to guess that it's going to happen, I would want to wait for us to actually break over that level and hold above that level. This is an important level, right? This is a big previous high. You can see this is where we rejected all back here in early January, which kept the market lower, right? This is also where we held here and held for pretty much this entire last few months above this 18K, which held the market higher right so if we're back under that level it's not great right it's not great that we're back under that level uh we're definitely going to want to see the market be able to get back over eighteen thousand before thinking that we're going to continue higher so that's definitely the first level i'm watching right here you guys saw it yesterday 18k let's keep an eye on that can we get above it if we can you might see some breakout action if you cannot this should stay weak uh so 18k is number one Number two, once again, it's at 18,050, and number three is the 18,125, right? Same levels from yesterday. There's no changes here. We did nothing. So this was level one, level two, level three. Nothing has changed. Um, 18K, 18,050, 18,130, 18,125, whatever you want to call it, and that is it. So... To the downside, this demand definitely looks like it's a it's a beastie one, right? It definitely defended yesterday, the 17.8. Look at how strong that defense came in yesterday. So there's no reason to be shorting here, right? We're not shorting here and longing here today, okay? That's not what we're doing. If we want to trade this channel, we're going to have to short here and we're going to have to take profits here, okay? That's how you're going to have to trade if you want to trade in this action. If you don't want to trade in this action, just wait for us to break outside of this 200-point range, right? Wait for the QQQ to get above 18,000 or wait for, I'm sorry, the NASDAQ futures to get above 18,000 or below 17.8. Um, if you trade within this channel, you need to adapt the mindset of a channel type trade, okay? If you trade within this channel and you're looking for huge continuation, that is when you get smacked in the face, okay? If you, if you, if you accept that you're going to trade in a channel, and you start shorting 18,000 and you're looking for this, right? You're looking actually for the chart to go left, maybe uh, down into the left. You know, it's not going to happen or it can, but it's the odds are low, right? So if you're going to get involved today in this action, you better respect the channel rules, right? You better short here. You better long here uh, if you're going to get involved in that. I'm not saying you should, but that is what is going to need to happen if you do. So 18,000, 8, understand that there is a channel here. Understand the likelihood of the stock or of the NASDAQ is to revert to a mean, right? There's a mean here. The mean is right in the center, right? And so when, when, a, when a futures contract or a stock is in a tight channel, every reversion comes back to the mean. Every push reverts to the mean, right? So that's the more likelihood move of the day, 18,000, 8. Keep an eye on those levels. QQQ, uh, 433, same thing, right? Same thing, 433, and demand down at 430. So it's a three-point range on the Qs. Do you want to get involved? Up to you. Uh, if you do, then you're looking for 433 shorts. You're taking profits at 430. You're looking for 433, 430 longs, taking profits at 433. Um, until we break out of this three-point range, this is what you need to expect the QQQ to do today. So 433, 430, that's it, right? That's it. So let's see what happens there today. I'm still holding a uh, small QQQ put overnight. I held some 433 puts overnight just to see if this 433 level sticks and we get some downside. So we'll see uh, if that wants to stick. You can see right now it is still rejecting relatively nicely even this morning at this 433 level. So um above 433 let me go into the hourly chart once again above 433 we got the 
you guys know, we have the 435, and then we have the Friday lows around that 437. So 433, 435, 437 are the three levels that I'm watching to the upside. To the downside, 430 definitely looks like it's that strong demand. If we break under 430, then I think you come back down to that gap fill, which is down at 426. Okay. ES, pretty much the same thing. We talked about that 5127 yesterday. Uh, if I go out, let me actually you know what? Yeah, I'll go out. Um, let me get to the four hour. So you guys can see right here. 5127, 5127, 5127, and that is the level that we could not get above yesterday. So what level did the ES reject yesterday? What level could we not get above? And why I think this is remaining bearish in the short term, we were not able to get above this double top high and double bottom low, right? We failed to get back above that level yesterday. So if we stay below that level, if we stay below that 5127, 5130, then I am not that interested in looking for upside, right? If we stay under this, that 5130, 5127, this should still keep pressure on the market to the downside. Obviously, you have that strong demand at 5080, so you need to be careful of shorting into that. Um, if we break the 5080, that's where you can get some more downside, right? So right here, 5080. Very clear, 5127, 5125, 5130, that whole zone, 5150, 5180, right? Those are our levels. We'll look for rejections here. If we pop higher, right, we could maybe move into the 5150, possible rejections there. If you get over 5150, you'll move into the 5180, possible rejections there, right? You can try, right, if you're going to long the market, you can try to long between these zones. That's what you'd have to look for, all right? You can try to long between these zones, but you need to be cautious of the supply areas. So if you, right, let's say you could try to long into this 5127, uh, right? You can try the longs into that level, but you have to be careful of that rejection. Now, if you get above the 2730, you can try the long into 50, but you have to be careful of that potential rejection. If you, if you get above 50, you can try the longs into 80, but you need to be careful of the potential rejections and that 50 SMA. So you can try to long. If you want to long this, right, you got to get, you got to look for breaks and holds and stair steps of these levels, right? You can try to long those stair step holds right here, right here, right here. You can attempt that, but you got to understand that you are longing in a relatively weak move and you do need to be careful of the levels above, okay? Spy, 507, uh, 503, what a beast of a hold yesterday. That's that gap level. So under 503, there's a major gap down to like 498. So that definitely defended yesterday. The, the Spy did not want to break under that 503. Uh, to the upside, you guys can see we have the 507, which is a very clear rejection point. 507, 503, 509, 511.50, all right? Yesterday, our 507 level definitely showed up, right? It definitely stays, stayed at a rejection. Today, we're still under that 507. If we stay under 507, there's no business in looking for upside, in my opinion, right, for any type of upside continuation. If you want upside continuation, you need to be at the very minimum over 507. Maybe that gets you a move into the 509. Maybe that gets you a move into the 511.50, but... If you're under 507, that is weak to me on the SPY, and uh, I'd be careful longing with that rejection above. That is where we rejected all day yesterday. You'd want to break above that level for that upside possible pop, right? A little pop to the upside. So uh, that's what I'd be watching. That is the, that's where the rejections came in. Uh, no, no 505. There's, there's no reason to be looking at 505 in my eyes. Uh, if you put a level at 505, uh, it's basically just slicing through the center of yesterday's chop. So I'm not going to look at a level that's in the center of a chop fest between like, I'm not going to try to trade 505 when it's right in the center of two major channel high and lows, right? So I'm only going to trade here or here. I'm not going to be interested in trading right in the center of this channel. So 
505, not interesting to me. Uh, I would only trade 507. I would trade 503. Uh, and if we get over 507, then I'd look for that push in the 509, right? If we get over 509, I'll look for that push into the 511, maybe into the 50 SMA. If we pop over 507 and we start to reject 509, I'll look for rejections here, right? If we get back under 507, then I'll look for the fade back down, right? That's how I'll look to trade today. So we could pop in the 509 if we fail back under 507. What a beautiful short that would be, right? On a failure back under 507. So a lot of things to look for. Just got to trust the levels, right? Trust the levels and know what reclaims of key levels mean, know what failures back below key levels means, right? This is how you trade, right? If you pop in the 509, if you fail back under 507, that's weak, right? If you try to do a little 509 break and fail back under aggressively and start to reject, that's weak, right? What happens at these key levels? What are the what are the traps that happen? Is it just a quick rejection? Is it a little trap above and failure back below, right? Is it a break and retest long entry that shows up, right, into the 509? There's a lot of different things that can happen at these levels. It's experience that sort of that's experience talking, man. You just got to see what happens at them, right? You got to understand what have I seen at these levels before? How does the market react at these levels? What does this reaction tell me? Uh, so that's the SPY. Let's continue. Uh, Russell held that 1960, right? 1960, nice hold. You can see right there. We've held this recently in the past. I'm going to assume the Russell just sort of fades higher here, maybe back into this 2035, right? I don't see much action on the Russell. I'm I got no interest here. 2035, 1965. Um, this is probably just a shit show, to be quite honest. Similar to what we did here, right? You're probably gonna start seeing the same thing. This shit show here, you've probably re-entered the shit show here, right? So really not much interest there on in the Russell. Dow Jones, Mike Jones, Daniel Jones, Chris Jones, Indiana Jones. Um, big daily chart demand down here. Big daily chart demand down here. You guys can see. Daily chart. Big demand. 37.8. So that's a pretty nice Dow level to look to see a hold, right? 37, 37,800 on the Dow Jones. Pretty nice level. You can see it holding relatively well for now. Um, Very nice stair-stepping downside, man. What a clean stair-step on the Dow that was. Look at this. One, two, three. All right. That's such a clean stair-stepping downside on the Dow lately. As of now, I would have no interest in shorting into 37.8. Right. That's a major demand low on the daily chart. This maybe pops back into that 100 SMA. That's something I'd watch there. All right. All right, that futures analysis was all business. No BS. Uh, real quick analysis there. We don't need to get into great detail here. It's a waste of time because we have done nothing different than yesterday, okay? Yesterday's analysis, if you watched yesterday's live stream, there's absolutely nothing more I could say. It's the exact same concept as yesterday. So let's continue. Uh, let's go to Tesla. Tesla actually on a very interesting retest here and could be sort of a good re-entry short, I'm not going to lie. If you think Tesla stays weak... Um, this could be pretty interesting. So right here, guys, Tesla had some lows around that 160.5, 160, 160.5 right there. Previous double bottom lows on the four hour chart. Well, Tesla is, uh, retesting that today. So this is sort of interesting, right? What does Tesla do at this 160, 160.5 today? Does Tesla pop back into this and reject again? Or does Tesla get back above it? I will say, Tesla had some good resiliency yesterday, so I'm not sure you want to really be looking for, like, uh, the next 30% uh, downside on Tesla here. Um, this has been, it was a pretty resilient move yesterday, and pretty much, if you needed, to, if you wanted to short it, it was, like, right off the open, and if you didn't short the open, you didn't really get much. So, I'd be careful with that, just knowing that, hey, Tesla held pretty strong yesterday. That 154 level did really well. Uh, let me put a little level there. Uh, and then we're back above these highs around that 158. So I think you can look for the the larger term retest fail, right? I think that's possible. But I would just understand that, you know, Tesla stayed pretty choppy yesterday, stayed pretty resilient. Um, Kathy Wood bought 20,000 shares yesterday. 
just as a, I don't think that, you know, is that important, but just to let you know, uh, ARK Invest bought 20,000 more shares yesterday. That might be the reason for sort of the maintain yesterday, just sort of general buying on this pullback. I'd say watch 158 and watch 160. That's what I would do. I'd watch 158 and 160. 160, 160.5, and then 158 if we fail back below it. That might instill a little bit of weakness there. So 158, that's your demand below as of now, and then 160. Okay? NVIDIA. Uh, I, have some, I have some concerns here. Um, and I don't, I don't want to be, this is the last thing I want to do today. Cause I got to make sure I don't walk into today with some kind of a, uh, bias. I don't know if I trust this SMCI upside, uh, if, unless the market is really pushing to the upside. I don't know why SMCI is going up. I think there was uh, someone in the chat, Chris, if you're listening, I think was talking about like some rumors that they might pre-announce or that they might stock split or some stump, something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Some price target increases yesterday. I feel like the market needs to be weak for SMCI to be ripping. Um, and the market has not moved on this rip. So is there a fade here? Uh, I'm going to keep my eyes open to it. I'm not going to be overly bullish on this. That's really what I'm trying to say here. I am definitely not overly bullish on this SMCI push here. Uh, I'm sort of more interested in if this is a failed, if this is a fake break right? A fake pop. Um, is this just another one of those fake pops? So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if there might be like some pending news going on. So I don't know if I want to get stuck in that, of course, right? That wouldn't be very fun if I got stuck in like, uh, some kind of a stock split news or some kind of a pre or a pre earnings pre announcement. So a little concern there, maybe something to stay away from, but let's keep an eye on this. So SMCI, Really nice consolidation, right? Nonetheless, around 855, really strong holds there. Nice consolidation resulting in a pop, which is nice, right? That's normal. Nice consolidation, consolidation above demand, right? Resulting in an upside move. Very nice. Um, so that's clean. Uh, we got above that 950 yesterday, right? Above that 950. You can see right here, 950. We got above that 950 and started to squeeze. And then we're also above this 980 level. Uh, 980 is a level that is holding in the pre-market today. So I'm going to watch this 980, right? If we fail back below this 980, what does SMCI start to do? We do have the 20 and 50 SMA below, which is another reason why I'm a little bit cautious on shorting this. I would say if SMCI can break back under 950, maybe there's something to look there, right? To see if this is an actual upside push. If you fail back under this 950 high, right, then maybe there's an interesting drop again, maybe on a failure back below that 50. Um, or, right, or you just sort of got to let this thing squeeze higher into that 1080 level, right? That could be where it needs to squeeze higher into, uh, into that 1080 level. So if this, here's 1080 here, here's 1080 here, 1080, right? That might be where it needs to squeeze to back towards that 1080 before you see any type of uh, tough action setting in. So, Tough one, man. I would be careful here, guys. This is this is the wild, wild west for now. This is sort of day one of a sort of end of day squeeze on SMCI. There's going to be a lot of question marks around this one today. I would not be getting too crazy here, but I think it could be something worth watching. Let's see where it tries to hold up and try to reanalyze it tomorrow. Um, I would say 980, 950 are your two key levels. 980, 950. If those hold, then you could see that continuation. Um, if you break back under 950, that's where I think it fails, right? That's the failure move back under 950. Okay. All right. Um, let's go to AMD, man, because I am definitely interested still. Um, if today is a strong semiconductor name day, right? If Nvidia goes up, if, uh, did I even look at Nvidia? I didn't even look at Nvidia, did I? Did I miss this? <laughs> I think I did. Um, we'll go to NVIDIA in a second. That's very rare of me to be not looking at NVIDIA. Um, so I'm interested in this AMD sort of uh, inverse head and shoulder, man. This It's interesting. And I don't want to look away from this because I think there's opportunity, right? There's, uh, there's the 100 SMA holding very nicely, right? See this 100 SMA, 100 SMA, 
100 SMA, 100 SMA, and 100 SMA, right? It's a really nice 100 SMA level that continues to maintain on AMD. You can see right here, 158, very nice hold, and a little inverse head and shoulder formation. If we can hold that 100 SMA and we can get over this 165, I really think there's a squeeze to be had. Um, but we need to wait for it to happen, right? The last thing we want to do here is anticipate it. It has not happened yet. Um, so we'll have to wait. But if we can get over that 165, I'd be watching, guys. I'd make sure your eyes on this over 165. All right. NVIDIA. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if I like the way this is grinding higher. It's just sloppy in my eyes. Like, this was a pretty sloppy move yesterday. I'm not really in love with how it moved higher. It could be, this could be the next, you know, this could have been the next big long down here. But I'm just not in love with this type of, you know, grind higher. Especially with the market doing nothing. So, we still need more from the market here for me to feel confident to any direction. I need more confidence on the QQQ. I need more confidence on the NASDAQ. What's it going to do here? What's earnings going to show us, right? We don't, we, there's too many question marks for me to really be confident in that NVIDIA is like, oh my God, here we go again, right? I just don't feel it yet. Market, I think I need more like brute force on that NQ. You know, if that NQ starts ripping and we start getting that big pop back on the NASDAQ, breaking back above these supplies, right? And we're ripping, you know, then, you know, let's make sure we're focused on NVIDIA because that might be time to juice this thing higher. But for now, with the market doing nothing and NVIDIA just sort of creeping, sort of concerning to me, definitely not something that I'm going to get, you know, horned up over. I'll tell you that. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on it. Um, I'm sort of watching like this 890 area, right? You got this 890 right here. 890, 890, a little bit of 890 action here. So 890 could be a good spot to watch today for some short side, right? If you do get a little bit more upside into like 890 into that daily 20, there could be some short side that steps in uh, right in, right up in here, right up into that 20 SMA. That's probably where I'd let it pop into before looking for rejections. To the downside, this 873 level held relatively well. You can see right here, 873. 873 nice little hold there nice hold at the 863 and of course nice hold down at that 855 so it's holding up which makes me say you know we're not going to just go out here and start looking for major downside um but i would say more important just look at the levels that nvidia is going to trade back into right make sure you're focused on levels that nvidia is trading back into so i would say if I extend this to the left, right, this 890 level was a very important previous level that we traded back into, right? You have previous lows, previous lows, big time rejection, a little bit of rejection here back on Monday of this week. So if we trade back into that 890, right, there's a reason to be cautious on the upside. So that's what I would watch today, guys. 890, be careful up into that level if you are long NVIDIA. All right. Um, let's go to, uh, MU real quick. MU defended that 20 SMA like a beast yesterday. We're back above 120. I would say look for a pullback to 120. That's about the only thing I'd look for today. See if something sets up there on a pullback to 120. Very nice hold of the daily 20. Not really much go else going on for me here, guys. Uh, pretty much sideways. Maybe look for reactions off 20, 120 or reactions off the 20 SMA. TSM has earnings tomorrow, so really no interest here, guys. I would say you could look for the rejections of 143, right, on a little pop and fade. But with earnings tomorrow, not that interested. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Meta because I am telling you I'm very interested in this. Uh, I might, you know, I told you guys yesterday there's probably going to be a loss in here somewhere for me on Meta, just to let you know. So get ready for maybe a decent sized loss on Meta. I haven't taken this trade yet, but I'm definitely getting eager. I think this is a, in my eyes, if we stay under 507, I think this is just a little bear flag for more downside. I think we're going to come back down to here at 480 on Meta. That's my personal opinion. I think you are going to trade. Let me go ahead and delete some of these. Or I'm just going to clean this line up. 
I think you need to trade back down, right, to sort of this major demand low. When a stock is sort of on its downside move, right, typically you'll come back down and test the major demand, right? So the major demand is 480. You can see right here, 480, 480, 480, 480, right? So that's the that's the level that a stock wants to come down to, right? We it, there's There's a lack of buying until we come down to this level. And when we come back to this level, it's a great buying opportunity, right? But we're still suspended above it, and I'm concerned of that. Uh, and we are right now rejecting under previous lows. So I would think Meta wants to come down here, which is a great move for the stock. Don't I'm not telling you that the stock is, oh, my God, sell your shares. Meta's dead. Holy shit. I can't believe Meta's going to go to zero, right? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is for the stock to be healthy, right, I think it's going to want to come back to that 480, come back, test this level, and then we can probably find another fantastic long here. Um, but there's a lot of meat on the bones here into this 480, right? And a very interesting short setup that I'm going to be looking to sort of strike here, guys. Um, so you can see right here, you have this, uh, you can see right here, right? This 507, this 504 level, you're starting to get like this sort of bear flag action into this level. Uh, so if we break under this 497, I'm definitely going to look to see if there's continuation here towards that 480 level. Uh, so big watch for me here on Meta in this consolidation. I'm definitely going to be eyeing to see what it does in here. Uh, if I start to see weakness show up, right, if I start to see, um, you know, that 504 or that 507 really turn into a rejection spot and we do get under that 497, I will definitely look for that continuation. So just an idea. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Another stock that's pretty much doing the same thing here is Amazon. Amazon, you can see right here, we had that big all-time high rejection. That was from Monday. We got under the previous demand at 185. And what are we doing right now? We are bear flagging back into it. So I would watch 185 very closely here. Keep an eye on this 185 on Amazon. If we reject here, it could be another nice downside into the 20 SMA at 123. Um, keep an eye on that 185 level. That's big. Uh, this is called Demo Pro. That's the tool that I use. Google, another similar stock, right? Another similar stock right here, 157. You can see right here. So 157. 157 and we're under 157 now are we bear flagging into 157 are we going to see another drop of this 157 supply very possible so let's keep an eye on that 157 if we reject it be careful back into this 155 if we get above 157 we trade into 158 okay so 157 big watch today let's see what google does there um let's go to coinbase Coinbase, nice hold of that uh, four-hour demand around that 207. That was a gap fill right here around 207. So that was a very nice hold on Coinbase there. I would want Coinbase, like I said yesterday, to come back into 235. This is where I want Coinbase back to. So if Coinbase can come back to 235, I will look to reshort this stock. Uh, but until then, I'm not going to touch it short. A little bit too much demand popping in yesterday. You can see, look at that strong reaction. I would look for 235 to get tested before looking for downside. So going to wait for that pop into 235. Dell. Eh, I mean, it held held that 116, 117 area we had, it looks like. It's back above 120. Big rejections up here at 125. So I'd be careful in the 125. That's very clear. You probably want it over 125. You can see double top rejection, double bottom low. 125, pretty clear rejection there. I'd watch that. Shop. Yeah, nice little break down there. Break and retest of 71. Yeah, I agree, Thunder. Nice watch. Nice watch there, Thunder. 71. 71. Who is calling me right now? Gonna have to call me back. Uh, so 71. Nice watch there. 
keep an eye on that on shop. What else we got here? Microsoft. Let's go to Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft. Let's look for a pop back into 420. All right, you guys can see right here. 420, 420, 420. You can see this is not a this doesn't seem like a strong upside move, right? Sort of this just sort of grind back to the upside. So I would watch this 420. You can see right here, 420, 420. If we can start to just sort of slide higher here and then reject, this could be a fantastic, fantastic short entry, right? Right there. That's what I would look for here on Microsoft. Look for that sort of grind higher. Look for us to start to fade up here and then see if there's a break of trend in short entry at the previous lows. Very nice watch there on Microsoft, in my opinion. All right. All right, um, we went over Amazon, we went over Google, Netflix has earnings, not gonna go over that. We went over Microsoft, let's go over Apple real quick. Apple, what a sexy, 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 sexy break and retest yesterday. You can see previous major lows at 174. Look at how perfect this was, break and retest, bam. Um, so that's, that is my strategy, guys, right? You can see it right there live. I mean, that is it. 174, turning into support, breaking back below it, turning into a rejection. I mean, it just doesn't get any prettier than that. Look at the 174 wick rejection yesterday. That is textbook break and retest yesterday. Absolutely textbook. So big time watch there on app. Oh, no, it's not a watch anymore, but that was sick, right? That was just pure sickness. Uh, on Apple. P and W, nothing, man. It's These stocks are dead, guys. I mean, they're sort of dead. So, I mean, I'm not like, don't ask me about snow when it's just doing this. I mean, it's dead, right? P and W, dead. Like, right? this is dead. So, some of these stocks have lost their lost their fire, and I would stop trading them. Um, stop trading P and W. Stop trading, you know, CRM. Our CRM is a little bit better. I mean, it's been sort of Got a little bit of action here lately, but I mean, it just, they just feel dead to me. Like snow, this is what snow has done. Let me zoom out. Snow has pretty much just had days, like this is a whole week. Look at this. This is a whole week of nothing. This is like two weeks of nothing. Um, you've had a few pops and drops here and there. Little pop, little drop, back to sideways, sideways random pop right so this is not interesting at all um and i would stay away from these for now until some volume comes back in right ever since that earnings drop this thing has been just a dead stock dead stock very similar to panw ever since the earning drop this has been dead uh, i'd stay away from those two after that big earnings drop something has changed in the in the price action something has changed in the in the characteristics that I would not want to be trading. Arm, 120, that's your level to watch. We know that, but this is also a dead stock. I mean, if there's anything random, um, then Arm is the most random of them all. <laughs> they get horned up because of Rake. Y yeah, I mean, Rake Trades has his, I'm sure he has his watch on these stocks. I saw him talking about them. You know, it... I, if he's got something he's watching, so be it. You know, power to him. But to me, I would not. I think he talked about, though, it needing to break out of a key level, which I would agree, right? If PANW gets out of this, then sure, right? I think, it, And I think that was his case. He said if PANW breaks out of the 293 level or one of these key levels, then he's going to watch it. And I would agree with him there, right? That would be a nice, you know, break of a channel high, and it probably creates a nice opportunity. Um, but until it does that, do not get involved in this. Right? I would I would not, at least me personally. All right. So that's that. Um eighteen thousand and Q, same level. Q Q Q four thirty three, same level. Nothing changes, guys. That's all I got for you. All right. Press that like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, we are here every single day starting at 8 a.m. Thank you for the, uh, I mean, I didn't really look at the chat much today, so that's probably good. <laughs> um, that's what we're going to keep doing. Nice, focused live stream today. Got it done quick. 
Uh, didn't really have much new stuff to go over just because the market didn't move yesterday. Guys, if you come here at 845 and you're yelling at tickers, I can guarantee you. Here's a little bit of drama. Let's do what we need something. I need something. Guys, <laughs> if you come here at the end of the live stream and you're yelling at tickers, okay, I can guarantee you we already went over it or I'm not going to look at it, okay? If I'm wrapping up the live stream like Jorge, SMCI, SMCI, please, 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 SMCI, okay? Guys, I'm not here. That's not why I'm here, okay? I'm not here to read the chat and uh, go over every ticker that you're yelling out in the chat, okay? It's not why I'm here. So if you want to come up, if you want to come see the stocks, show up on time. We got a schedule every day. We look at the same stocks every day. With a schedule, with discipline, I'm not running around looking at uh, looking at your tickers. Press that like button, subscribe to the channel, Raul, <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.